Welcome back to Kizaka Stockfell Insights, where we explore the world of stockfells and burial societies. Before the break, we touched on the importance of succession planning for burial societies and how it helps to limit unwanted disputes and disagreements with my expert guest, Tabiso Masurubele from Thai Vision Media. Numzan, Fairview Memorial Club has built its own clubhouse in which they plan to rent it out to potential tenants. And they have a massive yard as well that they plan to turn into a complex and shopping center. This seems like there's a lot of space, there's a lot of land. Is it wise for them to go um, to this route? Yeah, generally speaking, it's very wise for stockfellers to invest in tangible assets. Uh, and that's for various reasons. The, the, the one main reason is that when you invest in tangible assets, members get a sense of confidence because they can see what the group is investing in. You know, sometimes you've got a challenge with when you're investing in shares. People are used to something that you can grasp, something that you can easily understand. So within communities, people understand the concept of property, bricks and mortar, and how that generates income. So at that first level, it's a good idea for them to go into that. At the second level, it's wise because now they are involved in investing in something that potentially can generate monthly revenues, handsome revenues for them. But all of this is dependent on various factors, as you know. So, uh, you know, it depends on the occupancy and it also depends on, you know, uh, whether we might get hit with another crisis, say your COVID and so on, where you no longer have tenants, even if they're commercial tenants paying rentals every month where you're then looking at a situation where you're no longer having that rental revenue that you once were getting. So with any you know tangible investment that you're talking about, as long as people are aware of the advantages as well as the disadvantages, so that they can include that in their planning to know that in the event that this happens, do we then insure, engage uh, an insurance company to say, are we able to get insurance for such and such an occasion, for if this happens and that doesn't happen, building infrastructure, those sorts of things. Uh, so those are the things that people would then have to look at when investing in these types of properties. Now, let's just look at this because it sounds like it's more of a long term investment vehicle. Yes. How long will this process take? Because there's property developers involved mm. in here. There's so many moving parts. So how long will this take? Sure. Th normally, there's no fixed amount of time that it takes. Uh, with property development or with investments around property, as you say, there are many different parts moving to it. But one of the most important elements is the raising of finance for the development to get off the ground. And that's usually the start. Now, for that to happen, there's a lot of homework that needs to go into it. So as Fairview Club, what they probably need to do is to start with a simple process of developing a business plan that then outlines exactly what they're looking to do that identifies the place, the size of the land that they have, what's required on the land, and then attaching all the necessary costs that are to that. And then on the other side, then projecting what are the possible revenues. And then there are different things that they then have to do. So is to look at the area, do a risk assessment, competition analysis, uh, what type of complexes exist in the area. Uh, would there be an anchor tenant? What types of tenant tenants are they looking for? So there's a whole lot of work. and. The first thing that we'd guide a group like this to do is to get in touch with an expert who would be able to assist them to put these documents together so that by the time such a document is ready, you can then engage with potential funders and investors. You can engage banks, you can engage different types of investors, you know, your, your ghost investors, people who are just looking for opportunities. And then at the same time, we also encourage groups to look at what type of seed funding they have, because this process of developing all these documents, it does come with a cost. So if you're going to get an expert, if you're going to get an architect to look at the land, is it viable for that? Is it viable? Will they get the necessary zoning from the municipality? They have to be prepared to invest. So the investment doesn't only start once the building is up. It actually starts right at the beginning, making sure you're paying all of these professionals, but you're paying them for the simple reason that you're going to come out with a very credible and thorough business plan that makes a case. And that ultimately makes it easier for you to get the type of investment that you're looking for from financial institutions.
I think after the break, we're going to need to touch on just how do, do they go about having to approach property developers as well? Because mm. normally we know them as entities that are that go for high-end markets, that yep. are more in the high-end markets. So we want to see how they can accommodate this market as well. We will be back. Stay tuned for more after this short break. <laughs> Are you a member of a Stockfell or Burial Society? We at Thai Vision Media specialize in helping Stockfells and Burial Societies. Contact us for professional Stockfell and Burial Society administration, access to investments and funeral cover experts, and credible financial information. We will help your Stockfell and Burial Society to achieve your goals and grow. Contact us today.